Now here's the button that does quite a bit of the work. Um, it's a red button. That's the word connect on it, and it performs all of this. All that code when it's clicked. And what that does uh, is it starts by um, hiding the connect button so the user is, isn't tempted to connect that or, or to press on that button again. Uh, otherwise, that could cause an error by trying to connect to the same port again. Um, uh, we have a button again. Uh, refer to the button mode. If the text on that button uh, says client mode, if the user has switched to client mode, then what the program is going to do is just uh, open a port and try and connect to uh, the IP address that the user has put in at this port. So it's rejoining all this text, TCP, using the TCP format, and then or TCP protocol, taking the IP number and putting it together with a colon to put the, the port number in. Um, all of that is wrapped in an error check. And it says, if an error happens while trying this, then alert the user the server isn't responding. Um, again, there's a another option. We have an either here. If it's not client mode, if we're not in client mode, if the user has selected server mode, again, this is all wrapped in an error. Um, what happens is um, oh, we uh, open a port called listen, and we're opening this specific uh, port, again, TCP IP protocol with uh, the port number. And then we're waiting and getting the uh, information that comes into that port. So if you're in server mode, you're listening on this port. If there's an error running, that, that basically means that the server has already been running. Um, and so we let the, the user know that. So in client mode, we're opening a port, which we call port, and we're opening that IP address and port spec. If we're in server mode, we're opening a port, which we call listen, and it's just listening and getting information from that, from that uh, port. And both of those are surrounded by error checks so that we can let the user know uh, if that uh, port is already open. Uh, once that's done, we uh, highlight the uh, field, the text field, which we called entry, and uh, we set our flag to be true. We are now open and connected. Uh, once all that's done, we run a little forever loop, and what that does is it waits for anything to happen on the port, and for anything that comes um, through that port, we um, put that text into the display item, which is a area, text area that we're going to create in a moment. Um, anything that has come through, um, anything that has come through that port, we're rejoining, uh, rejoining that with a little, um, with a little text header at the beginning of the line, and then we update the display to show that text. And that display area is just a text area with nothing in it when it starts. It's this number of pixels wide and uh, tall. And then there's a text entry field, which is where the um, user types in the text that they want to send. And when they do that, there is a button. I click on that button. It says send text. And we check to see if the connection has been made. If a connection has been made, if the ports have been opened, uh, then we do this. We insert into the port what was in the text entry field. Focus on that field just to help the user see that it's been um, done. And then we uh, take the uh, uh, or set the display text. The display on that uh, the display is the area, text area. Mm -hmm. uh, what has been entered by the user and a little again text header there at the beginning of the line to show that that's being sent. You notice the the data that was received from the um, from the port 
the open port is preceded by a different set of arrows to show that that's incoming text. Makes it easy for the user to uh, to see what's what they typed and what the other user has sent them. And then at the very end, when all that's been done, we actually run the, the GUI by using do events. And against that, that's required if we use the new view new option. Put all that into a into Rebel, and we need to run this. You need two versions because you need a sending copy of the program and a receiving copy of server and a client. So we'll run it once in one instance of Rebel, and then we'll run it again in another instance. These are parts that we can see one or another. two copies running. and you'll see we have the menu settings we can save any of the text some place where we'd like to save it and what that does is save any of the text that's in that text data area um, I can also run the lookup IP menu option and the help menu option um, we can set to either client or server mode and you notice that when that button is clicked one of the bits of code in the uh, uh, in that button's action code is to hide this bit so that the uh, user isn't tempted to change something connect in server mode we'll go to our other our other going to connect to localhost and you'll notice when it's connected the, uh, the text entry field gets highlighted you can type something here and that's sent via TCP connection and you can see the little uh, text header there showing that it's been sent out and in the other program it was received in click back here sent out of this one and through the TCP port into this program. When we uh, when we close this program, we have a, a bit of code watching for the close button to be pressed. It sends the message to the user that the other party's been disconnected. We close this program and it closes the port.